Hi, in this video we'll check how and whether expected goals metric is connected to scored goals and can it be a good predictor of future goals. Before kicking off, do subscribe to my channel so you'll not miss more football analytics content, tutorials and updates. So what is expected goals? To put it simply, Expected goals is a metric that calculates the probability of a shot resulting in a goal. This model relies on thousands and thousands of shots with similar characteristics. They are the basis for expected goals calculations, the measure that ranges between zero and one, where zero means there is zero chance of scoring a goal, while one refers to 100% chance. If you'd like to learn more about expected goals and other metrics, check out my previous videos. Now let's dive into the code. So first of all, what we need to do is to import libraries. And we will import pandas, numpy, and uh, libraries for visualization. All the standard libraries we would use for uh, any data analytics project. Now let's get the data. We'll get it from understat.com and we'll be uh, getting the data of Italian Serie A 2022 season. And let's check what we got. And we have this JSON file which we would uh, loop through and extract expected goals and goals. And also we want to get the home or away identifier. Let's do this. And let's check the length of the lists we got. There were 20 teams in Italian championships with 38 matches each, resulting in 760 matches during the season. So let's check if we have this number and we do. Now let's merge this list into the single list and transform it into the data frame because it's much more convenient to work with data frames. Let's do this and let's check. We see that we've got uh, a data frame with three columns, expected goals, goals and identifier home away of home or away match. Now let's divide or separate home and away matches. Let's do this. And we see uh, as an example of uh, merge list, which is not list uh, in this case now, but the data frame uh, of home matches. Now let's check some basic statistics, overall basic statistic with, statistics without dividing matches for home or away. And to do so, we can, first of all, divide the sum of expected goals by number of matches and then the sum of goals by the same number of matches. And if we, if we do this, we see that uh, the average expected goals of Serie A uh, last season is 1.33, almost 33, and average goals is 1.28. So we see that the average expected goals is a bit above the goals, meaning that in general teams are not realizing all the chances uh, as they supposed to uh, score in terms of expected goals metric. Now let's check the correlation between these two. Um, metrics between the expected goals and goals. And if we do this, we see that there is a uh, 50, almost 8% correlation, uh, which is, uh, there is a correlation, there, there is a positive correlation, but it's not that, that significant. And uh, just a reminder, the correlation coefficient is measured on a scale from negative to positive zero. A complete correlation uh, between two variables is expressed by either positive or negative one. Uh, when one variable increases as the other increases as well, the correlation is positive, uh, meaning the uh, co correlation coefficient is above zero. When one uh, 
variable decreases as the other increases, it is negative, meaning the correlation coefficient is below zero. Now let's divide the basic statistics and check uh, it for home and away matches separately. So let's check, first of all, average goals and average expect, expected goals. And we see that uh, average goals and expected goals for Serie A last season is more or less the same. If we check the correlation, we see that it is 55%, uh, not that differ from the correlation of uh, overall matches. Now let's take a look at away matches. And we see that average expected goals uh, is above the average goals. Once again, just an, like in average, like in overall statistics. And if we check the correlation, we see that there is almost 60% correlation, which is about the home games and overall uh, stats of the season. Now let's visualize uh, this data. And to do so, we may plot a regression plot with expected goals and goals data. And here we are. We see that uh, the relationship is not that uh, clear. Now we may also visualize the same data for home matches as you see on your screen, and for away matches as well. We see that the relationship is not that clear and uh, it's basically pretty like predictable uh, that relationship is not that uh, straightforward because we mixed all the games from all the teams, from uh, all the teams of Serie A across the whole season, which is kind of not that uh, reliable predictor. Now let's try and do the same uh, and apply the same logic on a club level. So first of all, let's transform our uh, JSON file, JSON uh, structure into a data frame. And to do so, we'll use uh, pd pandas uh, dot data frame and we will pass our JSON object over here. And we have this data frame. So in order to separate or filter out a specific club, we may use its ID. So in our case, we'll take uh, Juventus, which, which has ID uh, 98. And we can do this by filtering out the data by, uh, with 98 ID and we want the data from the history row. We, later on, we want to select the specific columns, which are expected goals, goals and home away matches identifier. Also, we would like to add a new column with a match day number. We'll need it for visualization later on. And we can also create another column with goals and expected goals difference. So let's execute this and let's have a look what we've got. Okay, so we have this data frame with home away identifier, expected goals, number of goals, match number and goal goals and expected goals difference. Now let's check the basic stats for this specific clock for Juventus. Well, first of all, what is the average difference between expected goals, between goals and expected goals? Well, it's uh, the negative uh, minus almost uh, 0.1. And positive difference means a team scores more goals than it is supposed to score based on expected goals metric. Uh, it may be interpreted as team realizing its chances for more than 100% and the other way around. But let's divide the Juventus data for home and away matches because it may give us a better idea of how expected goals and goals relate to each other. And we can do this by filtering out using the 
home away identifier. And we see this example where we have a home matches only. Now let's check average for home games. Once again, we divide the sum of all the expected goals by Juventus and uh, we divide it by the uh, number of matches played by Juventus and the same logic applied to goals. So if we can, if we do this, we see that expected goals is less than the number of goals, which means Juventus scored more goals than it's supposed to score based on expected goals metric in home matches. How can we use this information? Well, if expected goals in a home match, in, in a specific home match, is above a current number of goals Juventus scored, and there is time left to play, so there is time for Juventus to score, we may expect Juventus to score. And we'll see in visualization later on uh, that only in five home matches out of 18, Juventus scored less goals than that was their expected goals value. But to, me, to be more precise, we would need to analyze how often Juventus scored in home matches when the expected goals value was less than number of goals. That's not the goal of this video. So now let's jump to uh, average for away games, shall we? And if we check the average for away games, it's the other way around. The picture is the other way around. The average expected goals for Juventus is way above average goals scored, meaning that Juventus is not scoring uh, what it's supposed to score it's not realizing its chances uh, for 100, 100% for some reason. Now let's check the correlation between expected goals and goals in home and away matches. If we calculate the correlation uh, for home matches, we see that it's almost 71% correlation, which is pretty good. And we may see that, we may say that there is a quite strong relationship between these two metrics. But when we check the correlation of uh, expected goals and goals in away matches, it's only 57, 58 percent, which is which means there is a correlation, obviously, uh, more or less strong, but not strong enough to use it as some kind of predictor, I would say. And now let's visualize all what we've done recently. And to do so, we may plot a regression plot to see how goals and expected goals are correlated in home matches. And if we do this, we see that it's more or less correlated. And uh, if we uh, take a look at the correlation, once again, it's 71%. So it could be some kind of predictor. If we check the away matches, we see that it's not that straightforward. There is a correlation, but not that strong as in home matches. Now let's create this wonderful chart. It is a chart with scored goals and expected goals in home matches. And also we add the goals and uh, expected goals difference. <clears throat> so what we can see from this chart? Well, first of all, we see that if these goals and expected goals difference is below zero, it means that Juventus scored less goals than it's supposed to score based on expected models. And the interesting fact is there are only five matches out of 18 Juventus scored less than their expected goals value, meaning the majority of the difference is above zero. Once again, meaning that Juventus realized their chances perfectly well in their home chances. Now let's take a look at the same chart, but for away games. 
now the situation is completely different. We see that uh, in most of the cases, the expected goals metric is above the goals, meaning that Juventus is wasn't uh, realizing their chances in away matches. And therefore, the number of goals they scored is less on average than the number of expected goals. Now let's add some moving average to these charts. And to do so, we'll introduce this rolling window and we'll, uh, which will add moving average and we will take five data points window, meaning that moving average will be calculated based on five last points. And let's run this. And if we take a look at the example here, we see that XG SMA is expected uh, is expected goals moving average, simple moving moving average, and it starts from uh, index four, meaning its fifth row, and that's why it started from the fifth row because uh, it has window five, meaning it calculates the average from the last five rows, and the same is true for. GSMA, which stands for Goals Simple Moving Average. Now let's visualize this. I will not go through the visualization code uh, to save time, but what we can see here when we are visualizing, we see that expected goals uh, moving average, which is red, may be a relatively good predictor of average goals with a window of five. Why these expected goals uh, moving average could be a good predictor? Well, if we take a look, we see that the red is ex expected goals moving average. We see that moving average is going up and uh, the moving average of, of goals is moving uh, up afterwards. The moving average of expected goals is going down, and we see that with a lag, with a window, uh, the goals moving average is going down as well. Now we see the expected goals is going up, and after a while, the, the goals moving average uh, moves uh, above, and so forth. Now, if we take a look at the moving average of home games and away games, we may notice that the, the relationship and the, its predictive power is not that straightforward once again, because there are too little data points for moving average to actually predict something. Well, that's all for today. We've discovered the relationship between expected goals metric and goals. If you like this video, make sure to click like and subscribe to my channel. You can show your support by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. The link is in the description to this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.